Hey everyone, I've been learning Japanese for 9 months now, so I figured it's a pretty good time to post another update video. If you're interested in what I've done up until this point, I'll quickly talk about it at the start of my 6 month video, so check that out if you want to. But yeah, apart from that I'll just go straight into what I've been doing with Anki. So there hasn't really been any big changes to be honest with Anki. I'm still sentence mining, trying to add at least 15 new cards a day, as well as keeping up with my core 2k reviews which takes me around 25 to 30 minutes for both of them. I currently have around 1900 cards in my Sentence Minded deck, and including the Core 2k deck, it's almost 4000 cards in total. I would have liked it to be around 6000 cards at this point, but I'm not really going to stress about it too much. I'll reach that point eventually, and maybe in the future I'll decide to make a push for a milestone like 10k cards, but for now I'll just keep going at this pace and try to avoid burnout from too much Anki. One other thing I've been trying as well is the monolingual transition. I started to make some Anki cards in purely Japanese and I found the process pretty seamless so far. The biggest thing holding me back from fully swapping over is that my reading time heavily drops because of it. When using an English dictionary, my look times are around 2-3 to three seconds, but when using a Japanese dictionary, if the word isn't simple to describe, it can take upwards of 10-20 to 20 seconds. I know that if I just stick with it for a few weeks, I'll become a lot more comfortable and my reading times will probably increase pretty rapidly, but for now I still haven't fully swapped over yet. And yeah, I pretty much covered everything for Anki, so I'll move on to how my immersion has been going now. So if you've seen my last video, you'll probably know that I heavily prefer reading over listening, and that's still pretty much been the case for the past three months as well. This is definitely the area I've seen the most improvement in, but at the same time, not as much as I'd really hoped for. The majority of my time was spent reading light novels, and it's something that I've really come to enjoy. Even now, the more that I do it, the more enjoyable it gets. In my last video, I mentioned I was reading through Kegimi no Kojo, which I quickly finished off a few days after posting it. And then I went on to read a few random books before trying out the Albuta series. I read up until volume 8 and absolutely loved it, which is kind of a surprise for me since I didn't really care for the anime at all, and somehow didn't even remember half of the show, so the books felt pretty fresh to me. I still haven't watched the movie yet, so when I reached the 6th and 7th volumes, everything was new and the story was really really good. Those two volumes have definitely been my favourite books I've read so far. Going into the 8th volume, I knew it probably wouldn't be as good as the previous two, and probably a lot slower, but I wasn't expecting it to be quite this slow. After the first hour or two of reading, I was already disliking it to be honest, and kind of just wanted to get it over with so I could continue with the next volume. But unfortunately this burnt me out pretty hard, so I kind of needed a break from the series and light novels in general. I'll definitely revisit it once the final volume releases in October, as I really want to see how the series will end. It's also really good immersion material since it's still quite challenging, but not so much that it's frustrating or unenjoyable. Since I was so burnt out of novels, I decided to mix it up a bit and try something new with a visual novel. The one I chose was mostly in a school setting, but with some fantasy elements as well, so it wasn't really too difficult to play through. It's definitely a nice change of pace as it had a good mix of visuals and pure reading and in the future I'll definitely read more visual novels. Unfortunately my current comprehension level isn't quite where it needs to be to be able to read the ones I'm interested in so maybe in half a year or so I'll try them out again. After finishing that visual novel I wanted to carry on with the fantasy vibe so I picked up Source or North Freedom manga. I actually watched a Gigguk video about it a couple of years ago so I knew I'd enjoy it and with the adaptation being the highest ranked anime on my anime list, it kind of pushed me to trying it out and I definitely don't regret it. The first few volumes were kind of slow to be honest, but it quickly ramps up in the later volumes. Since it was my first real fantasy book, there was a lot of specific vocab that I haven't really seen yet, but after finishing all 13 volumes I was able to mine I think close to around 200 cards from it. I did originally want to just jump straight into the anime without reading the manga first, and now I can safely say that would have been a complete disaster. Even after reading all of the manga, I still missed so much what's being said in the anime, so I couldn't really imagine what it would have been like if I didn't. After finishing Free Rent, I read a few different manga, but now I'm kind of just back to light novels again. I found a decent series called Ashta Hadashi Dakoi, so I've kind of just been burning through that, and I've got a few more books lined up before I want to return to Aobuta. So in total, for the past three months I've read 16 light novels, 1 visual novel, and 21 volumes of manga. This was a total of 2.6 million characters read, and my reading speed went from around 4,000 characters per hour to 6,500. 
It's a little lower than I was expecting for how much I'd read, but it's still a huge leap and I know it'll just keep increasing as I go. So yeah, I'm pretty happy overall with how things went for my reading version for the past three months. I did have a couple of burnout moments where I didn't really want to do anything, but got back into it pretty quickly and have so much more planned for the future. I'll quickly go on to talk about what I've been doing for my listening now. So this will be a shorter section again, as I still haven't really found anything that I'm passionate about whilst doing listening immersion. The biggest change I made is swapping back to Japanese subtitles again whilst watching anime or movies. It sounds stupid, but one of the biggest reasons why I swapped back is I watched Ponyo without subtitles, and since it's aimed at children, I thought it would be pretty easy, and for the most part it was, but at the beginning I missed probably the most important plot point so I didn't really have any actual idea about what's going on with the story. And as you can imagine, this was pretty demotivating, but I do feel a lot better about listening now after not forcing myself to do no subtitles. Even though I swapped back to using subs, I have been watching a lot more live streams recently, so I am still getting a good amount of immersion with purely listening. I found a few streamers I really enjoy watching, so I pretty much always have at least one of their streams open when I'm not reading. It's also a pretty nice way to listen to more casual speech as they're pretty much always playing games with their friends. I only really track my listening immersion hours using anime or movies though, but I'd probably estimate I've got around 40 or 50 more hours just watching live streams with a split of passive and active immersion. I'm definitely not at the level I should be compared to my reading, but I've only put a fraction of the amount of hours in so I can't really complain. And yeah, that's pretty much it for my listening immersion. Some of my favourite shows were Uchu Yorimo Toi Basho, Mitsuboshi Colours, and of course Soso no Fryuen. So my hours have been pretty consistent throughout the past three months. I had a few days where I did very little immersion, but mostly it was at least five hours a day of active immersion. My current hours for the past three months are 33 hours of Anki, 73 hours of listening, and 450 hours of reading. Again, this averages out to around 5 hours and 30 minutes a day of immersion. I've been able to keep up with this schedule for the past 5 months now, so I can safely say that I'll be able to do it long term. Although it's pretty obvious, but the more I do it, the easier it becomes. Right now the biggest issue I have is not knowing enough vocab, but I know this is gradually going up daily, so in another 6-12 to 12 months I'll probably be at a really good spot. And my total hours of immersion, including the first 6 months, are... 190 hours of Anki, 211 hours of listening, and 1,020 hours of reading, which is a total of 1,420 hours. And all of this is active immersion, as I don't keep track of any passive immersion, but I'd probably estimate around another 50 to 100 hours of passive. So for my future plans, the next few months I do actually have a few things planned out that I want to do. Next month I have a bit more free time than I usually do, so I kind of want to see how much I can really improve in this time. I'm going to try out 6-7 to seven hours daily of active immersion, and see if there's any real noticeable improvement compared to only doing 4-5. to five. If it seems interesting enough, I'll probably make a video about it next month, but if there's no real noticeable improvement, I'll just save it for the 12 month update instead. As usual, I want to do more listening immersion, but once again I won't really force it. Now that I've started watching streams more, it's kind of refreshing compared to only having the option of watching anime or movies. Unfortunately, I haven't yet found any Japanese YouTubers that I'm interested in, so if anyone has any good recommendations, leave a comment and I'll try them out for sure. I'll also keep sticking with the monolingual transition, and hopefully by the 12 month mark I'll have fully implemented it. And yeah, apart from just immersing more, that's pretty much it for any of my future plans. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and also thanks for any comments on the last video. I really enjoy reading them, and I'm glad people enjoy the videos. I did try to keep this video a bit shorter than my last one, so if you prefer them like this, let me know so I can keep that in mind for future videos. And yeah, that's it for this video. I hope everyone else's Japanese journey is going well, and see you in the next one.